Okay, welcome back, everyone. I will again try and see when I can do it um, to just use every board without having to erase anything. <laughs> I probably will fail. Yeah, I will fail again. Question is fine. Um, so let me remind me of you, me, and you what we were doing. So let's fix an expansion, and this will be fixed throughout this lecture. An expansion of the field. That does not define. Um, what we're gonna, well, what I want to prove, I will not finish this today, but I will get to the main step today. Is I want to show that if you have, so now this is, I think I already denoted this as six point one, but E subset are. Just do it in the planar case, and I will just do it um, for compact sets. Compact and definable. Definable now means again in this expansion R. Um, then we have what we what I like to call the dimension coincidence. So that means that the dimension of E. In the naive or minimal sense, top is equal to the upper Minkowski dimension. Again, this was here, the, the, this was the maximum M such that pi of E has interior. Uh, where pi is a projection from our pen. And it's two, but in general, E is a subset of R to the M, N. As I said before, again, you can show something, uh, you can show that you can, which much more is true. You could replace compact by the sigma, you can replace N, two by N, and you can take here really topological dimension in the sense of coming from the value, so inductive mm -hmm. dimension or. Um, uh, the back covering dimensions all the same in this equilibrium way. So I will just show I will just show the case that uh, n is equals to two. So I also pointed out last time the the, the result in the, the paper me and Chris it's really stated for Asua dimension there. And Asua dimension is a uniform version that can be made precise of the Minkowski dimension. And as yes, you maybe are not surprised by all of this, if you really want to prove something like this at higher dimensions, you really don't know, not only prove this, let's say, for, for a particular set, but really for families of sets, and then you prove this uniformly. Okay, and so essentially, last time we handled the case, um, case um, that n is equals to one. So we showed if something doesn't have interior, then um, so no interior implies that's something or from now on call M now that means when, when the Tarkovsky dimension is zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um wanna wanna recall one result, I think because this is something we're gonna use in a moment. I want to really state this again because I'm just use it in the middle of the proof so if everyone gets confused. Um so what we showed was that if you have a <coughs> You have a set E subset of R such that um, with um, such that Q of E is nowhere is uh, is um, 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 is not dense. Then this was a kind of nice extra example. <laughs> again, Q was a set of difference quotients where all of them are in E in this case and makes pretty slightly difference. 
and we show that then there is a rotate this Lipschitz function f from r to r and the rotation Q we already used, so let's use Z. Such that um, <coughs> E square is contained in Z applied to um, the graph of F. It's clear. That's what we show. I thought that this function was only defined on some subset of R, uh, or that the proof only gave you a Lipschitz function on a subset of R, or maybe you can automatically extend it to a whole um, to the whole R. I remember the proof. Uh, yeah, I mean, this picture that uh, you have this uh, um, thing that is perpendicular to the axis of this cone, and then you have the Lipschitz function that. Yeah, okay, uh, okay, yes. Maybe it doesn't matter because um, maybe it's, it's, you can always extend. Well, yeah, 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 sorry, I mean, it's a kind of. Yeah, yeah, I suppose sure. you can just extend it to the whole of R. Oh, yes, it is. Yes. It's, it's really this kind of. Um, yes, I think you. Yes, okay. I mean, I don't want to do this on the board. I mean, I'll give you the argument that makes that. That, um, yes, so this should extend to the, to the whole, or at least that's um, the. Um, <coughs> It's always true because you're over the field. It, it, even in any R, if you have a definable Lipschitz function, you extend it finally. The only trick is if you want to preserve Lipschitz constant, then you have to do some work. You don't have to worry about that. Here. Well, then, okay, what I, what, I do, what I do worry about is the kind of. Um, I want to have that this Lipschitz constant, at least for the set E that I pick, depends on um, depends on the interval that is missing. Right. Taking one variable you can extend without changing the Lipschitz constant. So make your say. Sorry, I don't know. Okay, to get in. I come back to that. What you could also do would be that would be a little bit less, uh, that that's, would be less nice to stay. Is that this is, of course, is always the uh, inverse of the projection onto this line. So, really, then what this would be saying is that um, restricted to the set E, this inverse of the projection would be, would be Lipschitz. And that the Lipschitz constant for that would not depend on E, but on the non on, on the then set. Right. So let me let me keep it like this. And um, if um, if I, next time I tell you that you had to change it like this, so. that's what you have to. Um, okay, but I want to say this here again that um, really this is a kind of the function f. Um, it depends only on and the rotation depends only on the interval. Um, we are missing. So if you if you have if you have an interval, you pick and you, and you can say for this interval you can find this f and the z such that whenever you have a set e and the q e is missing that interval, then it's contained. So the uses in this kind of uniformity in the model. Okay, and what I want to prove, and I will say one more time what um, what I mean by this. Is um, so I had this definition last time of Minkowski null, and so really, if you have a family now, um, say this is M 
null, not necessarily um, to Minkowski null, no, no mentioning of definability, if this limit here so that you have to use in the definition of And now what I'm going to prove is that if I have a definable D sigma family, such that each fiber is nowhere dense, then the whole family is F now. So now, so this is my notation is 6.5. So let E now be a subset of uh, 0, 1, M plus 1. Well, well I simply only do the unary case or the planar case, we only need M plus 2. So be this B D sigma such that E A is nowhere dense. Then, um, of course, and remember that D sigma here implies um, definability, and we have already shown that each of these individually, because it's nowhere dense, has to be M null. But now, what we want to do is want to show that the family. Um, mm. Using this result mm. where there is uniform. E A is no event for every A. For every A, thank you. That's okay. <clears throat> okay, so we have to, as I say this more time, we, we know that by, by what we proved last and that each individual is M now, but now we want to prove that all of that, that there is a family. And this will be just now really getting all what we had together because essentially what I told you is that this is what's uniformly everything and so very, really. Just have to bring this all together. So suppose now that there is L one thing of this as of the positive dimension um, such that for arbitrarily arbitrary. Or R larger than zero, there is an A in zero one M such that the boxes you need to cover of radius R to cover AEA is larger than R to the minus L. And this should not be zero. Should So you suppose it's not M null, then you have to be some kind of witness that uh, that um, this is that the limit is not always just zero. So now we pick a sequence R K K and N. So this is the radii and. Uh, a k in zero one such that they witness size that so such that a is larger than <clears throat> so now the next step we do we do the trick uh, as before note that um, If you take the product, and this really works at this level. So you take the end Cartesian product of EA, and you take the number now of n balls needed to cover EAN, that is larger than multiplying this just by n.
Okay. So now, so that I already mentioned this last time, was that so we, we um, I stated last time a, a, a uniform projection lemma, right? I mean, we had this in, in, in the proof for the unary case, we would take this part here, and so this would be now rather large, and then find a projection down so that that keeps the substantial part of this large dimension. And so last time I showed you this kind of, and it's a statement of this uniform projection lemma. So we can find such a, such a linear map, such a projection that works for each of these A's. Which should be, I mean, that should be really not surprising because the original statement of this projection lemma was that almost all of these projection works. So um, it should not be surprising that you can actually do that. So taking n large enough. <coughs> We get from 6.3, this was this uniform projection lemma. Um, we can find get S in R large enough and the linear map e from r to the n to r such that the number of balls needed to cover these things after projecting it essentially down, that's what the t does, is larger than this. Now we know essentially it's said that it this kind of we can assume that each of these has Minkowski dimension more or less in this kind of uniform way larger than a half. Um, well let's, and so now we do the same thing. We do the argument with a Q, and we now we know we can do this uniformly. So now consider let me write this down so I have notation for this. Now that um, This be zero one such that x is in now the q, so this different sets applied um, you can check that um, um, each of this, I mean, that's we already know, each of these fibers now is nowhere dense. I mean, that's a unary case. And this is a D sigma set. So um, now let's it's nowhere dense. And a, the whole family is this. So now what we can do is um, <coughs> we know that each of them is, is, um, is um, nowhere dense. So we had this kind of uniform version of uh, the strong Bayer category theorem is that for we can pick, pick finitely many intervals, E1 to EIP, such that we know that each of them each of the EAs misses that interval. So what we now do is, and this was by six, four, um, by six, four, now there are intervals I1, Rt, such that for each, um, a in zero one, there is sorry, correctly I N one to P such that A A intersect I 
Hi. This was as kind of um, uniform. Um, way of knowing that these things have to be uh, done. Yes. Okay, yes, please. Uh, so, this statement depends on K, Yes, sorry, yes, thank you, yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, so now, as by star, we now can find for each of these intervals, so by star, we obtain, <clears throat> now finally, many F1 to Fp Lipschitz, and again from R to R, and Z1 to Zp rotations such that each or each A in zero one M. Now the property over there is T E A two and so we should go here as a subset of the rotation of this graph. There is for each of this. I am this is too high, it will depend on A at all. Right, so they do not depend on A, they only depend on the, on the interval. So we had this uniform version of that, say, if you, if, you have a, if you have a D sigma set, such that all the fibers are, are um, nowhere dense, and you know you can find finitely in, in many intervals, yeah, yeah. such that is. And so now this is really, what I'm saying here, and I didn't want to write this down, but read the statement here, so you just, this depends only on the interval that QB is missing. I know. I, I understand that for the notation because that only depends on this on this perpendicular to this axis. Right. But this this Lipschitz function doesn't that really depend in an essential way on the step E? Um, I mean, the Lipschitz function picks out for every. Okay. That, that's the, 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 so the kind of the, the Lipschitz function is the is the um, it's really the kind of should have made this up, and that's what we said. It's the um, you have this e squared here, yeah. and the, this is the this is the projection onto this. Yeah. And really, what this is saying is that the inverse of this up to e is is um, is contained in a Lipschitz function, whose um, whose um, yeah, I understand, but doesn't doesn't this inverse depend on on e? I mean. Uh, well, yes, but the, the, even the image of this of this projection depends on e uh, e squared. No, the the, the uh, the Lipschitz constant does not I mean, that we can agree on, right? Um, so the, okay. the, the so, yeah. so, so, so I. Uh, so, so I, uh, we agree that there are finitely many Lipschitz constants. That's really the only thing I need. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are finitely many Lipschitz constants that only depend on i. And for each of those, I can find the Lipschitz function with that constant. So I should just reject this now. That would be fine. And then I change this over there. Because the only thing I really need is a, Lipschitz, is a uniform Lipschitz constant. No, but in the statement there. Yes, yes. So I got a statement. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 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 Same. But there are Lipschitz constants and yeah, for every oh, yeah. for Lipschitz okay. constants C1 to Cp. Such that for some F with Lipschitz constant. Okay. 
because the Lipschitz constant, and that's really the kind of the thing I want to, um, that will uniformly bound the, the, the Minkowski dimension. Okay. That's really what I need. Um, okay, so. Mm. So, um, uh, let's give this a name because now I have to have really the now this is something you can have to check, however then there is um, R0, zero such that for I in one to P and R I make this whole thing a name. And R is smaller than zero, such that N F A for all A in zero one uh, M such that this is smaller than R so R minus two X because this one here. Larger than one. Okay, so now here you would have you here you have to do a little bit of work. So now I'm done. So then I need this. Uh, I don't need uh, this because there's a dependence on A in here. And this simply says so, so if you have a Lipschitz function, and then, mm -hmm. then, then, then the, then the uh, Minkowski dimension of it is one. So eventually it has to be smaller than this one because this is larger than one and this here is the dimension. Okay, you have to check now if, 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 if it would be really always the same Lipschitz function that would be immediate because it would just have finitely many. Now you would now you have to check that the Lipschitz constant it gives you this, this bound here. But that 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 I have to um, however note that this one here is smaller or equal to the um, the number of balls needed to cover this. Okay. Um, however, we know that the, for the case we chose, it's uh, something somewhere over. Yeah, yeah, that's it. But for the case we chose. You know that this is bigger, so no, but for a in n, the number of balls is larger or equal to. RK. Minus S. Yeah. And then it's so now we can take the product. That's why the Reddit two comes. <clears throat> oh, okay, right. So then you have these kind of bounds and they are like uh, quadratic. Okay. So you have to be brief. Okay, so how much time do you It's good. <clears throat> but I don't get it wrong with the body. Um, okay, so I have to um, I have to do one more lemma. Um, because now we're really gonna go to the planar case, and there I need the following rather rather easy observation. So for now. That e let's go to the case between zero and one, and let's suppose 
is closed. Um, assume, and okay, we'll say what that is. Assume that this address need this that. Uh, Okay. So what I want to define is the following map. And this will be the crucial map I said what this is. It's a map from zero one squared to n and it maps like this to the minimum um, in Ex, so that's a fiber over X, e union two, and I intersect this with everything larger than Y. Two is really there to just make sure that this is everywhere. It's okay, I should say, really union two is to make sure that this is everybody fine. And what I care about is the, the points of discontinuity. And so, really, the picture you should have in mind here is that when we talk a little bit about such a, so E lives here in R2, and now you pick an X and then Y. Okay, the y is really interesting. Let's say fix y for a second. And then really what this function does, um, it picks out the minimum. Maybe. And that's something like this. So this takes out the minimum in this green set E above Y. So in this case, the graph of this function would be something like so I do this part here. Then we'll do this. Note that we pointed out that um, such sets are always uh, lower semi-continuous before because I was picking the picking the minimum. If you pick a minimum for a fixed y, this is a lower semi-continuous function because you're picking something in a, a, a in a closed <coughs> in a closed set. So what we already know, what we already know, is that um, for each for each y, the set of discontinuities of such a function of such a function is small. So these are, so in this case, a point of discontinuity of that function for that y, if you fix that y, so this is f of ty. Um, this is no more dense. But now what I want to have is that this is that this point of discontinuity um, for all of them is uh, uniformly m null. So it's in a uniformly um, nowhere dense, what I really mean by that. And so for that, what I have to do is I have to show that the points of the discontinuity of all these maps as you vary in Y, um, that they form a sigma set. That's what I'm gonna show. Yeah, I do have to erase something. Um, And um, so the, the, the group is actually really just a picture. I will state it never once. So six, six probably is a lemma. Um, so that we just write this down and then say, tell you what the notation is. What I want to consider is a set of all, I want to take a union of E 
And now on the x, y <laughs> in zero, one squared, such that at x, say what I mean by this, I think I did take it up into the notation here. And I write this here. Um, Ds of some function g is the points. Um, uh, with um, at which G has oscillation, oscillation at least S. So this this means that if we fix Y, then X is in DS. If this function here has um, has oscillation at least um, X. Uh, as at the, at the point, for example, this point here, this one here, the value down here, so this point here is, is one of these points because here you moved it, it's gone. Okay, and I claim that this is closed. And so then let's, let's denote this here as Fs. And so if you want to then, if this is closed, then the union, let's call this F, union Fs is equal. Okay. So what this means is that what we have, um, and you can somewhat check, that um, as you pointed out, I mean the um, um, right that this is precisely the set of all x and y such that x is a point of discontinuity of this function here. So in this case here, so for example, these two points might have different oscillation, but they both will contain that. So really, what this gives us is that these points where all these different lines gives you point of discontinuity, RFD sigma, and hence, um, um, if they aren't, um, each of them um, know where it ends, the whole set will be um, uniformly and now. Okay. <laughs> the proof is really an easy exercise in, um, in analysis. So I will draw a picture and then fix in the floor when I'm, I'm going to talk about. So what I'm going to do is I fix the point x, y in the complement at S. So that means there is um, so that there is so there is then a ball it's T zero and R such that the ball of radius T zero along X one is in the complement of the zero one because E is assumed to be closed. And let me draw here a picture. So you have two E somewhere lives here. You, pump, you take the point X, Y, and this is a point here. And now you know that there is an open ball around this where there's nothing in T. Okay. So that in particular then means that um, if I change x or y a little bit, if I change x or y a little bit, the function that is f of e will not change too much. So for example, if you 
if you draw this line here, and let's say now that f of e y looks something like this. E y, right? So, so this is remember that this gives you the kind of the minimal points in e above this. So in particular, it means there's nothing else in between here. So if I change this now a tiny bit, let's say in any direction, maybe like here, then around this point, this maybe mm -hmm. now uh, x prime, sorry, it's not y prime, x prime, uh, and then you can see if you, because you're so close, This is this is the same function because there's, there cannot be anything in E in between these two because um, and um, that then means because this this cannot be anything in here and so if, if this green function had a jump here or, or didn't have a jump in other case we are putting the continuous if, if, um, if this function doesn't have any oscillation of the precepts and then this small part here cannot have either. So this x prime and y prime um, are also in um, EFS. Okay, so let me let me write this now up, or this is maybe. What I'm, saying, what I'm saying then for every um, x prime y prime in this ball around y, we have all this equation it's double star at this function y is equal to. This one here. So it doesn't matter here, there's nothing in between. So now, since x was not in this, I write b s f of y. There's another, what is it called? It's a zero and I call it t. There is. T in R such that for all Z in B T X, the oscillation cannot be larger than S for this function here, this point is Z. So that means um, <coughs> F of E, you write this in terms of balls of the ball around Z X. Is contained in um, S of F E C. Anything that is mapped under in this ball that's mapped cannot be too far away from the function value at z. Okay. So now we're almost done. Now we can Let me just plug this all in. So by reducing zero, we can assume that this holds this holds. So this means this one here. This one. Oh, 
hours for all. Is more than zero. This is actually works out. Okay, now take T one, T two, R such that um, T one plus T two is smaller than T. And what our last x zero x y in this ball t one x y. And all I now have to argue is why this lies in the set that I want so that it doesn't lie in FS. Oh, we're still showing that FS is open. And so the now really observe that for if you take any other X in the ball T2 around X0, then F, I'm making this argument precise, Fx1 y0 is equal to f p and to x y by hopefully by, by double star and then thus every um, z in b t to x0 So now I know that this is always the same function. Um, now I always know the same function. So then I get this bound, it transfers over from um, uh, y and x to um, from y to um, y zero. So then f of e bt one x zero y zero is a subset of this ball of x c f of z y z this is my <clears throat> triple star so this means that x zero y zero is not in fs that's what I'm showing. So everything in this ball is not in F0, hence the set is closed. Okay, but to really kind of uh, give, give you all this kind of detail to read what this is, this is this precise in this picture. And so, so what I what this gives you is that this set are now done, um, that this set Fs is the sigma, so hence uniformly and now, and so now, um, what we're going to do next time is we'll do some counting that allows us to show that this gives us that the subsets of the square have the right dimension. Okay. Any any questions? Okay. Continue on Friday. <laughs>